It's been several months since I made any videos, and that's kind of what life has been like with a toddler in the house, craziness at work, and the craziness that's going on in society right now. So with that put aside, um, let me show you what I want to talk about today, and that is how to take a nice shiny piece of steel like this and give it a nice black oxide coating like this. Let me switch the cameras around and I'll get you in close and we'll talk about how to do that. So before I um, show you how to achieve the black oxide finish, I thought I'd give you a nice close up, kind of a before and after. Um, so this is just all 1018, nothing special. This was a, just a chunk of bar stock that was literally cut off at the bandsaw, cleaned, and the finish applied. This one was turned in the lathe and then polished with 320 grit scotch Bright. So let me set this one aside. Well, I mentioned, as you can kind of notice, this one's more matte than this one, and that's purely because this is just raw bar stock and this one's been turned and polished. For example, if you wanted it to be super matte, like even more matte than this, you could do whatever machine work you need to do, and then you could possibly sandblast it or bead blast it, and you'd get a really matte finish after you gave it a black oxide coating. So let's move these closer together. So basically today what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this chunk of steel here and make it look like that. It'll take a couple hours. It's not super fast, but it's definitely not as slow as the gunsmiths would have used back in the day where it takes, took several days to do. So let me rearrange the camera again and I'll show you the setup. So let me start off by saying that this is by no means um, an original idea of mine. I learned about it maybe two years ago from Justin who runs the, a YouTube channel called The Cog Wheel or The Cogged Wheel. I can't remember off the top of my head. But he had done a video called One Hour Red Rust Bluing, I think was the name of the video. You can look it up. And um, he basically demonstrated this process. Um, when I use, I've used this process several times on various projects, but it was, I would say, more aggressive than I wanted the, the process to be, the chemical reaction. So I think, in my experience, I got a little more pitting, potentially, than I wanted to actually have on parts. So since then, I've been... Um, playing with the formulation, dialing it back, if you will, to try and make um, the, the chemical reaction less aggressive. Um, still yielding a really nice black oxide finish, but you know, trying to avoid any kind of pitting or any kind of other um, negative effects on the actual um, steel. Uh, so here's the solution I've been using. I made this, this particular batch two or three months ago. And I just have it in this old DiSerono bottle because it's made of glass with a plastic lid. And glass is a good storage medium for chemicals that might potentially attack other materials. So what this is, is stuff that you can get any time of day at just about any of your big box stores or grocery stores or um, pharmacies. And what that is, is in this particular formulation is one cup hydrogen peroxide, one quarter cup vinegar, and one sixteenth of a cup or one tablespoon of salt. And you can scale that up and down depending on how, what the size of the batch you wanna make. Um, what else you would need, let me set this aside, is um, you need a heat source. This is a little hot plate for the shop. I've got a couple of those and a stainless steel spot, um, pot. Once you apply the finish, it'll rust and then you actually boil it in water. And you can do this, as Justin mentioned in his video, you can do it inside, I've done it inside. It's perfectly fine, depending if you have a significant other or not and whether they care. Um, actually, I need that. Let me set this stuff aside. Um, a heat source can help. And then at the very end, you'll need some oil. This is just some whey oil. And then you can, before you apply the solution, you wanna clean it. You can go all out with the greaser. Um, I found that it's fairly forgiving. So like most of the time I just wash it with some soap and water in the sink. And then to apply the solution, you can use like this paper towels, which is what I'm gonna to use today. Rags, I've used an acid brush, um, just about anything, as long as it's clean, fairly clean. Um, let me move the cameras around one more time and I'll show you uh, the application of the solution. Okay, so off camera, I've gone ahead and used the heat gun to heat up the part because that it's really only needed for the first step, but it helps speed up the reaction a little bit. As you can see here, I've got a, just a little bit of the solution in a old piece of Tupperware. Squeeze it out a little bit. Let 
And there you can see it's, hopefully the close-up shot's doing a good job. Probably just need a little bit more. And there you can see it's uh, rusting it, slowly but surely. I've got the uh, water boiling or starting to boil off camera. So that once I've got enough of this applied, I can boil it. I apologize uh, in advance. If you get a bunch of background noise, I hear the neighbor getting ready to mow the yard, so. There it goes. So this looks like it's good enough for the first coat. I'll let this dry a little bit longer because the water's not quite up to a boil. And then I'll bring you back after the first boil. Okay, so it's been in the, give you a good close up here. It's been in the water boiling for five minutes, which I think in this case might not be enough because you see it's got a little bit of gold in here. So I'm gonna put it back in. Okay, so this is my carting wheel mounted up on its arbor that I made quite a while ago. Um, my wood lay is set to 400 RPM, so I'm going to hit this lightly. And I'm just using these tongs to hold it. You know, because it's I pulled it out of the water maybe a minute and a half, two minutes ago, or something like that. So it's still fairly warm. Warm enough I don't want to hold it with my hands. Bare hands, I should say. That's it for that. Back to the bench for another coat. Now see, in my opinion, that coat I just put on was too thick. I found I don't want it to, you don't want it to bubble like that. You want it to go on like this, but not bubble. And, uh, in my personal opinion, the bubbling really has two contributing factors. How hot the part is. So for example, if this was cooler, it would be less likely to bubble. And how wet you make the surface. If you make it really wet, it seems to be more likely to bubble up. And if you make the part really hot like this currently is, it seems to bubble up. I probably should have actually just taken this in and ran it under a little bit of cold water for just a couple seconds to cool it down a little bit, but it'll be okay. Again, I apologize for the lawnmower. And that's it for the applying the second coat. So now I'll go boil it again. And then I'll do a, several coats off camera. There's no need to show you all of them. I'll bring you back when I've got a good number on. Okay, so here, yeah, that's in shot. This is the part after six applications of the solution. I haven't carted it yet, so I'll take this over and I'll cart it and then I'll bring it back and show it to you. Okay, so here it is after the carting. It's still got a, you probably can't tell on the camera, but it's still got a slight brown color to me. Um, but as you can see, it's substantially darker than it was after the first one. So I'll apply a few more coats and then I'll bring you back. When I think I'm close to the done, I'm thinking 12 should be enough for this piece, but I'll bring you back then. So last night got away from me, got a bunch of stuff I had to do around the house. So I didn't get all the applications done. I had to do the last two today. This is the 12th and final application. Um, as you can see here, it's substantially darker. So I'm gonna go over and card this and I'll bring you back when it's ready to do the final step. And uh, there we go. As you can see there, the color is not exactly the same as these, but it also hasn't been dipped in the oil, which is the final thing I need to do. I'm gonna take this. I'm going to put it over here in the oil and I'll let it sit there overnight. And I'll bring you back one more time tomorrow. And we'll take a close look at it, see how it compares to the other ones. So this part here is the one I was applying the black oxide finish to earlier in the video. 
it spent two days now in whey oil because I was out of town. Um, and as you can see, it's a little shiny, and I think that's just because I haven't done a good enough job of weeping, wiping off all the excess whey oil. Now, to my eye, it's not as black as these two are, and there's two potential reasons for that. One is that I might have carded this too aggressively when I was applying the solutions, or it could be that I didn't boil it thoroughly enough. Now, there's, again, a couple ways I could fix this. One, I could take this over to the carding wheel and card all the black oxide off and start over, which is not, in, in my opinion, a great idea. It's kind of a waste of time and overkill. But I would probably just, if I really wanted to make this darker and richer, I would degrease it to get the whey oil off of it and then just apply some more um, coats of the solution. Or potentially you could just even take it, degrease it, take it and directly boil it, and that might be enough. Uh, kind of to wrap this up, I would tell you this is a, in my opinion, a really good solution for home shop stuff. Like if you're making tooling for your mill or your lathe, hold down clamps, etc. A black oxide finish is really good. It's easy to do. It's protective of the, your parts. And it's not toxic, which is if you've done with some of the other stuff, um, hot bluing and there's some of the other chemicals that you can do to, to finish metal can be very um, toxic to you or very caustic to the the other metal items in your shop. I'd add that it's also a very um, forgiving process. Like I mentioned, this isn't as black as these and it's easy to fix. So hopefully you found this video entertaining and informative and I'll catch you again next time.